Hi students, welcome back to Google Classroom of Sri Gogolam Public School, Guruvay. How are you children? Hope you all are fine over there. In the previous class, we have discussed about Jainism and main features of Sangha. Hope you learned that portions. Students, have you ever heard about monasteries? Today we will start with the topic monasteries. In this chapter, we have already discussed that both Jainas and Buddhist monks travel throughout the year for teaching people. The only time they stayed in one place was during rainy season because it was very difficult to travel. Then they lived in temporary shelters like gardens or in natural caves in hilly areas. For example, here you can see a cave in Karle that is in present day Maharashtra. Is a site where monks and nuns lived and meditated. As time went on, they felt the need for more permanent shelters. So monasteries were built. They were known as Viharas. That means monasteries were known as Viharas. Students, here you can see the earliest Viharas were made of wood and then they were made of bricks and some were even in caves that were dug out in hills, especially in western India. And most commonly, the land on which Viharas were built and donated by rich merchants or landowner or the kings. And in monasteries, local people came with the gift of food, clothing and medicines for the monks and nuns. And in return, they teach people about the teachings of Buddha and Mahavira. And over the centuries, Buddhism spread to many parts of the subcontinent and beyond. One of the Buddhist texts tells us that just as the waters of rivers lost their names and separateness when they flow into the mighty ocean, like that Varna, ranks and family forgotten when the followers of the Buddha join the order of monks. That means when the followers of Buddha converted into monks, they forgot everything like Varna, ranks, family, etc. Now we will discuss the most important thing that is system of ashramas. System of ashramas was developed around the same time when Buddhism and Jainism were spreading. Here the word ashrama does not mean a place where people live and meditate. Here ashrama means a stage of life and life is mainly divided into four ashramas. Brahmacharya, Grihastha, Vanaprastha and Sanyasa. Brahmin, Kshatriya and Vaishya men were expected to lead simple lives and study the Vedas during the early years of their life. That means they gave more importance to study Vedas and attain knowledge. This stage of life we can call Brahmacharya. And the second stage of life is Grihastha. In this stage, they had to marry and live as householder. And the third stage of life is Vanaprastha. In this stage, they had to live in the forest and meditate. And the last stage of life is Sanyasa. Here in this stage, finally they had to give up everything and become a sannyasis. And generally, women were not allowed to study the Vedas. And they had to follow the ashramas chosen by their husbands. These are all about the main features of system of ashramas. And with this topic, we are ending this chapter. So students, I hope all of you understood the concept clearly. And please note that the later URLs, notes of the lesson and test paper are also attached along with the class. Make use of these available materials. Study well and attend the test paper without fail. That's all for today. Thank you.